Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, horror, mystery film called Silent House. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Somewhere in the countryside, a young woman, Sarah, joins her father, John, as he restores their dilapidated lake house. After returning from an internet cafe one day, John informs Sarah that he's never seen her ex-boyfriend post a message on her social media account again. A little embarrassed, Sarah admits that the guy wants them to get back together, but John thinks that his daughter is too good for him. As they're about to enter the house, Sarah's uncle, Peter, opens the door for them and informs John about the mold within the walls, which is possibly spread throughout the house. After using a sledgehammer to make a hole in the wall and see what Peter says is true, John assures him that the insurance will cover it. John then asks his younger brother for the Polaroid camera to take pictures of the mold, and as he does, Sarah suddenly feels uneasy. However, Sarah just brushes off her feeling and proceeds to the hallway, where Peter playfully scares her. Peter tells Sarah she used to love that as a kid, adding that he can't get over how much she's changed. After that, Peter joins John in the basement while Sarah makes her way upstairs, but she stops in her tracks when she hears someone knocking on the door. When Sarah opens the door, she sees a young girl her age standing on the porch. The girl hugs Sarah and introduces herself as Sophia, claiming that they're childhood friends. Sarah admits she doesn't remember Sophia because it's been so long since she's been to that place, even joking that she has holes in her brain. As they make small talk, Sophia continues bringing up the times they played together as kids. On the other hand, Sarah tells Sophia that the house had to be boarded shut so that people wouldn't keep breaking into the property. Sarah's then decided to help her father fix it up and sell it adding that she isn't in school and will be joining her father in doing more house restorations until she figures out what she wants in life. After their conversation, Sophia invites Sarah to hang out with her later, and Sarah agrees. Sophia then bids Sarah goodbye and gets on her bicycle, but before she leaves, Sarah tells her that she does remember her. Back inside the house, Sarah locks the door and returns the key to its hook before turning on some oil lamps. She then hears her father and her uncle have a small argument, with Peter asking John for his key so he can leave. Trying to remain calm, John asks Peter to call an electrician for them, leaving Sarah smiling as she listens to the two. Once Peter is gone, John tells his daughter that there won't be any problems if people just do what he says, and Sarah can only agree with him. Then, after John tells Sarah he doesn't need any help in the basement, she goes to the kitchen and turns on the electric light, before opening a bottle of beer. Once again, Sarah is disturbed by a knocking on the door, but there's nobody outside when she checks it out. Confused, Sarah returns inside and closes the door, only to get scared when she hears some noise upstairs. Just in time, John notices Sarah and asks her what she's doing, and upon telling her father what she's just heard, he claims it's probably just rats. However, Sarah insists he takes a look. With their electric lanterns, John and Sarah investigate the second floor and go from room to room to find the source of the noise. At one point, John purposely hits Sarah with the door as a joke, which his daughter doesn't think to be funny. Then, in the master bedroom, John sees some Polaroid photos on the bed and hides them away before Sarah sees them, telling her they're just insurance photos. They also go to Sarah's old room where John instructs her to go through her stuff in the closet and throw anything away that she doesn't need. Finally, before John goes downstairs, he assures Sarah he'll keep searching for the noise source to make her feel relaxed. Now alone, Sarah starts organizing her things and throws away the ballerina outfit and red trinket box she's found. It isn't long before she hears a loud, banging sound from outside her room, and when Sarah calls out to her father, he doesn't answer. So, she starts to panic. Refusing to stay in her room, Sarah braves the darkness and looks for her father, doing her best the entire time to remain calm. However, when a door suddenly shuts behind her and she drops her lamp, Sarah flees downstairs and attempts to leave. Unfortunately, the front door is locked and with the key missing, Sarah rushes to the kitchen and finds its door locked too. Not wasting any time, Sarah uses another electric lamp and searches around for the key, unaware that a man is watching her from the living room, but when she goes there, the stranger is already gone. Desperate to leave, Sarah forces but fails to remove the woods blocking the windows and when she hears more sounds from upstairs, she decides to hide under the table. Suddenly, Sarah sees a beer bottle rolling on the floor, so she uses a chair in a futile attempt to cover herself. Then, the stranger walks into the room and picks up the bottle failing to see Sarah hiding from him. When the man eventually goes away, Sarah's finally able to breathe a little. However, she soon realizes that he's behind her, and when the stranger grabs her legs, Sarah quickly moves and flees to a room upstairs. There, Sarah uses a dresser to block the door, crying as she looks for a way out. She also picks up an electric lamp on the floor, and upon examining the room, an unconscious John falls from behind some folded carpet. Terrified, Sarah backs away from her father and balls in a corner, unable to comprehend what's happening. When she finally collects herself, Sarah crawls towards her father's body 
and discovers he has a head wound. Sarah can only sob as she begs her father to wake up, and when she finally realizes he's alive, she searches his pockets for the house key and finds it. With no landlines and cell phone reception in the house, Sarah promises her father she'll come back with help. To save her father, Sarah sneaks downstairs to open the padlock on the kitchen door and gets disappointed when it doesn't work. With no other choice, Sarah goes to the basement in the hopes of finding a way out from there. However, what Sarah finds is a messy kid's bed, and when she realizes she's not alone, Sarah quickly hides. The intruder holds an electric lamp as he walks around the basement, and once he's gone, Sarah resumes her search for an exit. However, the man suddenly returns, so Sarah frantically inserts the key into the padlock of the cellar door. The man's heavy footsteps only make Sarah even more nervous, so she flees outside when she finally opens the door, sobbing and tripping along the way. After what seems like hours of running, Sarah eventually reaches the main road. Sarah tries to catch her breath as she stands there, getting confused upon seeing a little girl staring at her from afar. Suddenly, Peter arrives and almost hits Sarah with his SUV. When she gets in the vehicle, Sarah has a hard time telling her uncle what happened. Finally, Sarah manages to inform him that her father has been attacked and that she's left him in one of the rooms. So, Peter decides to drive back home to help his brother. Sarah keeps protesting, saying they need to get help, but Peter tells her they don't have time to do that. Sarah's uncle also wants to know how many people are in the house, so Sarah informs him about the man and the little girl on the road. However, Peter says he didn't see any girl. Peter then tends to Sarah's bleeding wrist, and after taking his gun and instructing his hysterical niece to lock the car, Peter goes inside the house. As Sarah sits crying in the car, she realizes that the trunk door is unlocked. Then, it slowly opens while Sarah is busy watching Peter. When Sarah notices it and sees the stranger through the rearview mirror, she quickly makes her way back to the house and locks the door. She then calls for Peter, and when he doesn't answer, Sarah decides to arm herself with a pair of scissors. Unfortunately, Peter almost hurts Sarah when he mistakes her for an intruder. Sarah angrily tells Peter that he's left the trunk open and that someone's there, so Peter asks for his key to check it out. However, Sarah adamantly refuses to give it to him and starts to panic again, leaving Peter no choice but to comfort her. After that, the two stay together to look for John, but they don't find him in the room where Sarah's left him. All they see is John's blood on the floor, so Peter searches the house once more. Sarah then follows Peter to continue their search for her father, and while they look around, Peter quickly hides the Polaroid pictures he's seen by the garbage bag. With no sign of John anywhere, Peter and Sarah agree to check the other rooms on the upper floor. There, Sarah and Peter still fail to locate John, and when the lights suddenly go out, Sarah's left crying in the dark. After hearing a loud thump, Sarah takes the Polaroid camera on the pool table and starts taking pictures of her surroundings, using its flash to see what's happening. She then screams upon seeing a young girl in the doorway and breaks down when the intruder approaches her. When the power comes back on, Sarah finds herself hiding under the pool table and looking at two pairs of legs. The men appear to be taking pictures of someone on the pool table, and as they do, they keep telling the person that they're playing just a little game. Sadly, Sarah realizes that the grown men are talking to a girl in a ballerina dress, and as they finish, one of them offers her a snack. Shortly after the men and the girl leave, Sarah sees someone dragging her uncle out of the room. Now that she's on her own, Sarah takes Peter's gun and quietly follows the person who's taken Peter. Shaking, Sarah goes downstairs to see where Peter is, and when she sees a man heading her way, she doesn't hesitate to fire multiple shots before hiding under the bed. Unfortunately, things get even scarier for Sarah when she sees a young girl beside her, who's quickly dragged out from under the bed. Unsure what to do, Sarah leaves her hiding spot and tosses her gun that's out of bullets on the bed, which suddenly starts getting soaked in blood. Horrified, Sarah locks herself in the bathroom, where she finds a little girl playing with multiple beer bottles in the bathtub. Sarah also sees the toilet mounted on the wall as blood drips from it, making her hyperventilate. In only a matter of seconds, the water in the bathtub turns dark red while blood gushes from the toilet. As if Sarah isn't scared enough, a sledgehammer suddenly breaks through the bathroom wall, forcing Sarah to get out. Once back in the bedroom, Sarah realizes that the entire room is covered with mold. Then, before she leaves, she sees the little girl coming out of the bathroom with a man whose body is also covered with mold. Feeling as if she's going crazy, Sarah flees downstairs and smears blood all over the wall. When Sarah reaches the ground floor, she's surprised to see that Sophia is waiting for her. Sarah tries to leave the house as Sophia reminds her of their date, and when Sophia sees her struggling to open the door, she hands Sarah a key. Sarah then tells Sophia that's not the key to the front door but Sophie informs her that's not the way out. Confused, Sarah follows Sophia to the next room where she sees her father on a chair, bound, gagged, and covered with a large plastic bag. Sarah demands to know what Sophia did to John as she removes the plastic bag from her father, but Sophia tells her that what she did isn't even enough. Sophia urges a frightened Sarah to remember everything that's happened to her, saying she has holes in her head before returning to the red trinket box she's thrown away earlier. 
As Sarah cries and opens the box, she discovers a Polaroid photo of the girl she's seen earlier. She then walks to the window and looks at her reflection, eventually understanding that she's the young girl. Sarah also realizes that there's no intruder, and that in fact, she's the one who attacked her uncle and dragged him around the house. With the truth finally revealed, Sophia hands a pair of scissors to Sarah and convinces her to finish what she started, but Sarah gets mad and slashes Sophia's hand, making the girl lose her balance. Annoyed, Sophia tells Sarah to stop punishing herself, and as Sarah notices the slash on her own hand, similar to that of Sophia's, her friend suddenly vanishes. Now that John is awake, Sarah removes the tape from his mouth and places the knife inches from his face, ordering him to be quiet before her mommy wakes up. She then takes a beer bottle and straddles John, forcing her father to drink the alcohol. Then, Sarah gets up and drops the bottle, her demeanor suddenly changing before she starts speaking like a child. Sarah acts like she's in pain, telling her father that what he's doing to her hurts. Knowing that he needs to do something, John assures Sarah that he'd never hurt her, but Sarah knows her father is lying and throws at him the indecent photos of her he'd taken when she was a child. Trying to be gentle, John tells his daughter that she's making up things that never happened and talking to people that didn't exist. John then promises he'll help her, get her through her problems and begs her to let him go, convincing Sarah he's being truthful and decides to untie him. However, once he's free, John comforts Sarah before slapping her and repeatedly hitting her with his belt. Meanwhile, an injured Peter finally regains consciousness and asks John to leave Sarah alone, but John ignores him and sarcastically tells him to enjoy the show like he always did. Peter then threatens to stab John with a pair of scissors if he doesn't stop hurting Sarah, but his arrogant brother quickly disarms and kicks him before calling him a loser. Unfortunately for John, Sarah's done being submissive and hits him in the body with a sledgehammer before finally killing him with it. After that, Sarah focuses her attention on her cowering uncle, who begs her for forgiveness for not putting a stop to her father's cruelty. Because of that, Sarah decides to spare his life, and after looking at her scattered pictures on the floor, Sarah leaves the house, using the key that's in her pocket the whole time. In the end, it's revealed that Sarah has dissociative personality disorder due to the trauma her father and uncle have caused her. Sarah must have suffered too much that she's chosen to repress the most painful memories, causing her to be confused with what's real and what isn't. While the little girl represents Sarah's lost innocence, the male intruder represents her dark side. On the other hand, Sophia is one of Sarah's personalities who refuses to forget the past, even though Sarah already has. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.